Hi friends, welcome to Okanary at Home. Today we're going to do a really fun multi-part process using bleeding tissue papers and the printing method Collagraph on a wood panel. This is the final lesson in our collage process pack series and we're going to use multiple collage based processes to layer up on this nice wood panel. Because we're using kind of multiple processes for this um, lesson, we're gonna start with one set of materials. You're gonna take a break to let that part dry, and then we're gonna move on to the next part of the project, and you'll see that marked in the video as part two. Okay, so for the first part of this project, you're gonna need tissue paper squares. If you're sourcing materials at home, they have to be the bleeding tissue paper. There's a difference. Um, you're gonna need a couple of paintbrushes, your wood panel, the cup of Mod Podge, and then I like to use two different bowls of water. Let's get started. So we're using a material called bleeding tissue paper today, and these are cut into little um, pre-cut squares. Um, bleeding tissue paper is going to give us a painterly quality because the pigment from the tissue paper, the color that's in the tissue paper, when it um, reacts with water, kind of bleeds out of the material. So that's gonna give us a really fun material to use on our wood panel today as we watch the colors bleed together and mix. So you're gonna choose a square and you're gonna start by placing it wherever you like. Remember in collage, that's called arranging to find a place where you want to start. And then instead of using glue right away to stick these shapes, we're gonna use some water. Put a brush into a clean bowl of water and you're gonna kind of almost paste the water on to the square until it sticks to your board. And then you can see that the water reacting with the pigment in the tissue paper creates this painterly effect. It's bleeding out. Now you have two cups of water because one of them is to apply the water to the shapes and the other cup of water is to wash your brush in between. So before I choose a new color to add to my collage, I'm going to wash my brush. Oh, and you can see the blue come off in the bowl. I'm gonna choose a new color. And I'm going to overlap this pink on top of the blue. You can press that before you use your brush. And you can see it's translucent, so you'll be able to see the blue one through the pink one. I'm gonna grab a little clean water, and I'm gonna apply that water to the new square. And you can see we're getting some color mixing. When you add pink and blue, it creates a nice purple. And you can use your brush to kind of paint with that color if you want. Um, I'm, but I'm loving seeing this corner through the pink square, this corner of blue which is now mixed to purple. And also notice the way that the paint is starting to seep into the wood grain. So I'm gonna to continue to explore selecting, arranging, and mixing the colors of these tissue paper squares and until I get many different colors on my panel and I fill up the whole board with a rainbow of colors. Sometimes you don't even have to add the water. It just kind of soaks up the water that's already there. And then you can take your brush and flatten out the edges. As you can see, you're getting this very watery, translucent, kind of stained glass-like effect that creates a lot of depth. Depth means that it looks like you can jump into it, like there's a lot of layers in there. Okay, so I filled up my wood panel with a rainbow of different colors and I have filled up every single part of the large square. So I know that I'm finished for that reason. So next we have to seal in these shapes with a type of glue called Mod Podge because as you know, we did not use glue to stick these shapes, we used water. Once that water dries, your tissue papers could actually fall off. Before we seal it with the Mod Podge, I'm just gonna take um, a clean paper towel, clean dry paper towel, and just very gently blot any extra excess moisture. Um, you don't wanna wipe, just like a little tap. Any parts that are especially wet. 
Next, we're gonna apply a layer of Mod Podge over the whole thing. Now, Mod Podge is like kind of like a type of glue. It seals in colors and paints and surfaces, and it creates like a nice, slick, shiny surface on top. You're gonna have to trust me because at first it's gonna seem like you're covering all your colors with this white stuff, but it's going to dry clear and shiny and you'll be able to see all those colors through it. You wanna make sure that you're spreading it out evenly where it's not too thick and gunky on any parts. And this step is complete. So now you're gonna to have to wait for this to dry completely and then move on to part two of the project. Welcome back. It's time for the second part of this project. So your wood panel should be dry by now. Now one thing that I was noticing is that while it was drying, because of the moisture in the wood, the wood was warping a bit. That means it was kind of like bending. But once it dried up, it went straight back to its original form, so I have no warping. So we're adding a second layer to our wood panel. Um, we're gonna create a collagraph and then print it on top of this beautiful rainbow of color that you've made. A collagraph is when you create a collage with textured materials and then you roll it with paint or ink and print it onto a surface. So the materials that you'll need for this are your cardboard circle, this is gonna be your printing plate, foam shape stickers, your paint roller, we call this a brayer, the dark paint in the paper tray, and you might need some scissors. First, we're gonna design our printing plate. So I'm gonna take this circle and be inspired by its shape to lead my design. So maybe I'll take this shape here, the hexagon. Just peel off the back and I'm gonna put it right in the middle. So these are stick-on shapes, you just have to peel off the back. So I'm gonna create a design that's somewhat radial. That means that the, the shapes are kind of bursting out from a center point. Use your scissors to customize your shapes. Change them however you'd like. And one thing that actually doesn't matter so much with these stickers is the colors that you choose because you're gonna end up rolling over those with the paint anyway. So now I'm gonna start adding some of these smaller shapes. All right, so I've gotten to a place where I feel like my printing plate is finished. It was fun to kind of place the shapes in this somewhat symmetrical design. And again, it's radial because all of the shapes are coming out from a center point. But you can make yours however you want. There is one thing that we do in other collage processes that you want to avoid in this one, and that's overlapping. You actually get a better print if you don't overlap your shapes. Now it's time to print. So what you're going to do is you want to take your brayer and you're going to roll your brayer with paint and then roll the paint onto your printing plate. Okay, so I'm going to kind of roll this, getting paint on my whole brayer. If you have a tray at home to do this instead of the little paper tray, sometimes it's more fun to have more space, but this works fine too. And then I'm going to take my paint and roll the paint onto the plate, being mindful to cover all of those colored shapes with the dark paint. I'm gonna give it a little bit more. One helpful tip is that you could actually test your print on a piece of paper first to see if the amount of paint that you're putting onto your plate is the right amount of paint. Um, you could do one or two tests until you get it just right, 
and then you can um, print on your final panel. So now I'm going to take my plate carefully on the edges. I'm going to find where I want to print it. Now I'm just going to print mine once. You can print yours more than once. But since I'm just going to print mine once, I'm going to put it right in the middle of my panel. Carefully lay it down. Once it hits that wood, you don't want it to move. And then I'm going to press and rub. When we rub like this in printmaking, it's called to burnish. Okay, are we ready for the big reveal? Flip it up. <gasps> wow. So, as you can see, the print is a copy. A copy of the design that you made on your plate and you transferred it to the beautiful surface that you created in the first step. Now again, you can print this multiple times onto your panel. You could roll your plate again and find a different place to lay your plate down, um, kind of overlap those shapes. Or you can continue printing on um, spare paper that you have around the house. I just love layering different processes. It makes an artwork more complex. I worked really hard, so I'm super proud of this one. I can't wait to see how yours turn out. I hope you'll share your work with us on Instagram, at Art. Thanks for making with us today, friends. Bye.